Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. It's actually <laughs> deeper yeah. than we previously thought. So we found out just before the show from Hamity that uh, their specific intent not to cause yeah. American fatalities was a theory of ours. We're like, yeah, this seems like this is basically what they're trying to do. Now we know for a fact it is, and I'll let him tell you why. Yeah, because yeah, uh, before we went on air, and I asked yeah. you your permission if we could do yeah. this, and yeah, um, you were great enough to let us do it. So, I, I, And actually, for the audio listeners, I would highly recommend you tune into this on Drinking Bros Podcast on YouTube and subscribe for this, because you're not going to see these pictures anywhere else. Um, you brought actual pictures, uh, Jamie, if you could put those on the screen, of the bombs um, uh, the rockets. The, the rockets, yeah, yes. The that, missiles. That were, I guess, aimed yeah. or, you know, air quotes, aimed or, or landed outside of the bases. So this is something that probably the Iranians did not want anybody to know. And as you will see in the picture, that obviously one of the missiles fell short, probably due to engine failure or mm -hmm. something. The Scud's and, never been all that reliable. And if you see, honestly. if you look in the picture right now, if we put it up, if you look inside of that rocket that rocket is a scott it's a it's a russian made they mm -hmm. call it shab one or shab two in in in, uh, in the in iran and if you look inside mm -hmm. of that missile it's completely empty that missile is able to carry about one ton of of tnt of mm -hmm. explosive and if you look into it it's absolutely empty it's just a warhead and look like they actually put a small amount of tnt in it uh just to cause a small explosion Right. So they kind of wanted to make sure 100% that no one would get hurt. They wanted to make sure people would evacuate, will be out of the way, and that this missile would not cause any any problem. Yeah, because, you know, looking at the picture here that's yeah. up on the screen now, like, it, it's totally empty. There's nothing it, in there. It's empty in it. You see it's an engine in the back. The body is empty, and it's just the warhead that's in the top. And this missile, it's a huge. If you look at the other pictures where it's actually sitting on a truck in Iran, this missile is powerful. It can hold a lot of stuff. Like it's it, been, it does. It's the, uh, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it the same style missile that was used to send gas over the Kurds in the early 90s? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, not, no, no. I would say this missile is uh, entered Iran in 1997. Uh, they tested it in oh, this is the two 97. Then. And in 98, they tested it, and they had a successful test with it. And um, this was given by, you know, by Russia. To th That's how they, how they <laughs> bought it. But... Um, they, they have much more powerful missiles than this one. They have it in their arsenal, but they didn't use it. So Iran wanted to make sure 100% that they will do a respond to keep their honor and integrity, and, and integrity in front of the Iranian yeah. people. And, and what do they do after the missiles land <laughs> in, the, in the U.S. base, in the Iranian TV? They announced 283 American casualties. Is that what they did over there? Yeah. That's what they announced. Yeah. I did not know that. Because yes. over here, Trump no. gets on and he goes, no. all is well and good, no. exclamation mark on there Twitter. Was a, there was a rumor in the American press that one Iraqi general was killed. <laughs> but that, that was, actually. I got that information as well. There was a three Iraqi general, two other soldiers was, was that killed. true? No, it was not true. Nobody got hurt. Yeah. I mean, if you go to your enemy and tell them that a missile is going to land 20 minutes from now, of course you're going to run and take a cover. So um, there was no casualties. They wanted to make sure nobody gets hurt, specifically Americans. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that mm. th you have to see the location is where they shot the missile. They shot the missile from Kerman Shah, which was with the borders of Iran, and they shot it all the way to the Al Ambar province, which is the opposite side of Iraq. I mean, you have the U.S. embassy way closer. You have yeah, the green, lots the of locations. The whole green zone is right there. Green zone. You have so many locations that yeah. are closer, but they chose that <laughs> specific location. Uh, and basically, any radar in the area would pick that rocket flying mm. over because it's about like 400 kilometers that the rocket has to fly. It would take about half an hour yeah. uh, for it to arrive there. So it's it really the way they planned it. It was intentionally to make sure they don't go to war. And I, as, as I mentioned earlier, once I saw the body language of the Iranian president mm -hmm. uh, reacting to the daughter of Qasem Soleimani, I kind of felt that. You know, they, this is nothing that's going to happen. And uh, there is a lot of controversies right now happening or people talking about saying, you know, they might actually have notified the Americans. They might have spoken to uh, a, a kind of a middleman like the Qataris and informed them that, look, we're probably going to do an attack. Uh, but them informing the Iraqi military, that's an easy thing. 
they knew the Iraq and military <clears throat> in the same base. It's like me and Daniel in the same base. Yeah. And they would tell me yeah. uh, that they're doing an attack. Of course, I'm going to turn around and let yeah. Daniel go get a cover. Uh, so they, the way they planned it, they planned it perfectly. They made sure uh, no casualties because they didn't want to go to war. Um, the the Iraqi prime minister did not have any power to do a thing. I mean, that poor guy would just get him phone calls from both sides. And uh, him being like an actor for Iran, he didn't know what to do. Yeah. But um, I think this was a, a crazy, uh, would have been a different outcome if an American was hurt. For sure, yeah. And, and this I want to break down what exactly we're saying here. Yeah, and, and, cause, and uh, pardon to interrupt, no, no, but just ahead. to yeah. be clear for, yeah. for both of you guys, yeah. U.S. and Iraq could have shot down these rockets if they wanted to. I mean, the Iraqis' air defense uh, may have the capabilities to do that. Um, well, so the, U- the U.S. installations that are high, like, sensitive uh, places, then, yeah, absolutely. Because yes. if it takes yeah. a half hour to get here, yeah. yeah, you would know, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, they didn't want to hurt anybody. As you can see in the picture, the rocket is empty. Uh, it really is just to look like a body, you know? Right. Uh, you know, you know, as some of my, you know, some of my Intel friends were like, <clears throat> they like to look like a water heater. You know, it's just it just look empty. There's nothing yeah. in it. And uh, the, it, it was the smartest move by Iran because Iran was afraid of going to war. And they knew that any response, any life will be taken, that Trump was going to destroy 52 locations in yeah. Iran. <clears throat> so, and they didn't want that because you have to understand Qasem Soleimani is is the brain for Iran. And when. Qasem Soleimani was killed. This is the thinker for Iran. Iran had a shock. It's the biggest shock in Iranian history right now so far. That Iran is still in shock to this moment, by the way. Because when your best player dies and you don't have anybody that plays as good as he is. Yeah, you're looking at the Golden State Warriors right now. What do you got to do? Yeah, Yeah. they're two best. Um, So, yeah, just to let... I want to be real clear about what we're saying here. Just because the... The sequence of events and how people are talking about it is very important. So Iran was certainly involved in, well, let, let's just go back to the beginning. Iran has been involved in trying to interrupt the Iraqi government forever, right? Since we got there, basically. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they've been trying that. And finally, I don't know what the tipping point was, and maybe you could speak more to that yeah. in a minute, but... Um, Whatever the tipping point was, Iraqis finally, even Shia Iraqis, were like, fuck these guys. Like, they're rioting at embassies and fucking burning down the houses of politicians in Iraq who are pro-Iran, right? So this stuff is all happening. And then <clears throat> we come, we find out, our intelligence services find out that Iran is trying to get involved in some of the protests and move them towards U.S. bases as well, our U.S. embassies or whatever, and make it look like, Iraqis hate America and also be able to uh, score some political points by killing or injuring Americans or fucking up their facilities under the guise of being an Iraqi protest, like he said last time. Yeah, great right? Point. And we find that out, and we find out Suleimani's coming to town. He is the mastermind. It's like, I, I, don't, I don't know. It, it's like there's a Southwest cooking thing happening here in Wilmington, and Bobby Flay is coming to town. Chili cook-off? Bill, yeah. Bo- if, if <laughs> Bo- Bobby Flay is a Southwest cooking specialist, and yeah. he's coming to town during a Southwest cooking thing, he's, that's why he's coming here. Yeah. Soleimani is, a, is, a, is an expert in, in terrorism and, and these uh, information operations and, and covert operations. He's coming to town in the middle of this shit going on. We know that he's there for that. There's no question about that. Yeah, He's the expert of putting protest away. Yeah. So, He's done that in the 80s in Iran when the Kurds rised against the Iranian right. government asking yeah, for yeah. their yep. independence. This is the number one criminal for the Ayatollah in Iran. Yep. If there's any political issue, there's any rising going on, Qasem Soleimani gets cold. He's Joe Pesci mm-hmm. yeah. in Casino. Yeah. Basically. And, yeah. Like, he fucks shit up. So what happened was, and I'm just going to say this in plain language, and how are you feel about President Trump? He and his administration read the situation realized that iran was weak and realized that they could take this guy out he was a big enough piece of their military operation that they could take him out and iran a would not be able to respond because he's their thinker like he said Mm -hmm. like he's the guy that would he's the guy that would be responding and he's gone now so they effectively cut the head off the snake 
and he also realized that they were in a weakened enough position and this guy's history was bad enough that they wouldn't be able to come back at us with anything real because they are not prepared to fight us right now, yeah. right? So that is what's called good foreign policy. Uh, it's all analyzing. Like it's a win. Saying, analyzing the situation. Yeah. Uh, you know, Qasem Soleimani, <laughs> here's the thing. Iran was already losing its grip in Iraq. People are rising, Shiite and Sunnis, against the Iranian influence. You have to understand, because for you as a civilian, you have to understand that there is Sunni and Shia in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Iran is a Shiite background. If a Sunni goes out to protest against the Iranian, this is normal. That happens all the time. But when someone who is supposed to be a believer of yours, who is a Shiite, who shares the same background as you, goes out protesting against the Ayatollah, that terrifies the Ayatollah. Mm. Terrifies him. Because that's a problem. You know what that? Because that's like cancer. It moves into Iran. It moves into his own people. Because then his own people will say, oh, well, there's other Shiites standing up against him. Maybe I'll stand up against him too. Yeah. So that terrifies the Ayatollah. Perhaps the only reason that they wanted to make sure they contain the situation in Iraq to make sure this doesn't transfer to Iran. Did it transfer to Iran? It did a little bit. Some Iranians went out and started speaking against them. Yeah. I so, mean, a lot of college-age Iranians absolutely. are talking shit like openly right now about Soleimani. Uh, Soleimani. A lot. Um, a lot. People were giving cookies and candies away in, in four different countries uh, celebrating the killing of Soleimani. Yeah. So when Soleimani showed <laughs> up in Iraq, they wanted to do something, as I said in the last podcast, that they wanted to do something to calm the protest, drag Iraq into a war with Iran. And then it keeps Iran safe. It keeps America busy. And this is end of the story. And there's no more protests mm -hmm. of, of Shiite Iraqis out there. But the Iraqi protesters were extremely smart. They contained the situation. They knew what Iran moves were. Uh, and he came over to attack our soldiers. So I, I would repeat that. We killed Soleimani before he killed any one of our own. And that's why well, any more urgency. of our own. Any, any more. Any, yeah. any, yeah. any, 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 any. Because he's of our, a mass murderer. Yeah, like any, intense. like before he killed <clears throat> anyone in our, in our own, our own Americans. Yeah. So <clears throat> we took care of him before he took care of anybody, before he killed anybody, any Americans or anything like that. So I think um, his, his killing was the perfect time. This has, should have been done a long time ago. Uh, he has cost a lot of Americans and other nationalities their lives. And, uh, Iran has been threatening us for so many years and have gotten extremely aggressive, and we have not responded to them. So they would have gotten even more stronger in front of us mm -hmm. yeah. if we did not do something. Yeah.